we are going to look pretty daft and we will have failed if if we go into the next election and this this third attempt at producing legislation has not stopped the votes. That is the biggest threat to the Conservative Party and the country as a whole. Previously on the Rwanda plan, you'll remember Rishi Sunak had tried to come up with a proposal that didn't irritate either wing of his party. Well, now in the latest episode, we'll find out whether his plans are going to work. MPs are already tabling amendments to the bill. Miriam Cates is MP for Peniston and Stocksbridge and she's with us now. Good morning to you. Now, your first amendment, uh, Miriam Cates, is to try to stop individual claims. But the government says that their legislation already does this. There are a number of amendments that we've uh, laid down, but yes, one of them very much does address these individual claims. So the problem at the moment is that although the bill as drafted does make progress, it means that um, courts can't rule the Rwanda policy as a whole uh, to be wrong or unsafe, that people can't take claims on that basis. They can make individual claims that Rwanda could be unsafe for them. And at the moment, the threshold that's set uh, within the bill is that uh, someone could claim that they had compelling evidence uh, that Rwanda would be uh, unsafe for them. So what that could mean is that they could say that uh, they had a mental health problem that meant that they couldn't go to Rwanda and compelling evidence could be something like a doctor's certificate. Now, unfortunately, we know from past experience that immigration lawyers will exploit any loophole they can see. And indeed, I think the majority of the people who were taken off that flight in June 2022 were for reasons like this. So if we don't block off the potential to make these individual claims, then sadly, we know okay. uh, that it, that it will be exploited. So our amendment seeks to narrow it further so that, of course, people who are medically unfit to fly uh, or where there have been a mistake by the decision makers, of course, they have leave uh, to apply to uh, have these suspensive claims. But we are blocking it off. We do want to block it off further than the gov government currently okay. is. So on that point, Michael Tomlinson, the migration minister, has said that it's not possible to shut out every single claim and it wouldn't be right for two reasons. Firstly, it would breach international law and secondly, because it's not the British British thing to do. Even during the Second World War, did we not shut out claims going to court? We're not trying to shut out uh, every individual cl claim, as I, I just said. And it is very important that people who are not medically fit to fly uh, for, for reasons of illness or pregnancy or their children or where mistakes have been made and things like that absolutely have got the legal right to appeal. But sadly, we know that unless we very much tighten uh, the list of reasons for which you can appeal, we know that the system will be abused. And j just think about this. If somebody claims that they have got a mental health problem, which means that they can't go to Rwanda, it's very straightforward to get a certificate from a doctor to say that how can you disprove it what judge would then find against that person and send them off anyway now if we lived in a world where people weren't trying to exploit the system then we wouldn't need to do this but sadly we know from the history and the experience of the last three years that this is exactly what is happening that these are international criminal gangs they know exactly how to exploit uh, different countries borders and okay. different countries laws Mary and if they spot a loophole they mm. will exploit it Mary in case on that and I don't know the uh, answer to this but what are the figures of people that are proven to have done what you've just said? I, I don't know how many people have uh, exploited the system, but we go back to that flight uh, in, in June 2022 that was taken off the tarmac because those individuals, each of them made a claim along the lines that I've just said that meant they couldn't be sent to Rwanda. And I think we just need to look at the big picture here. These are people who have crossed the channel, the busiest shipping lane in the world. Uh, many of them have paid huge sums to be uh, brought to Britain. They want to come to Britain. And if we are going to secure our borders, we have to have an effective deterrent that means that people know if they come here illegally they will be detained and removed to a third country now it's taking us an awful long time to try and make this work with rwanda but if we can't make it work with rwanda then we can't make it work in principle we can't make it work with other countries we can't expand uh, this scheme that other countries are very much looking at so we have to make sure we close off the loopholes that were very clearly identified in the supreme court judgment uh, last year we have to close those loopholes otherwise we don't create an effective deterrent and i think Everybody in the Conservative Party wants this to work. We want the Rwanda plan to work. We want to secure our borders. We want to stop spending £6 million of taxpayers' money a day on, on housing uh, illegal migrants in hotels. But we can only do that if this bill works. It's our third attempt. It has to work. 
we've identified what we think are some weaknesses of the bill. We want to improve that that bill, and that's in everybody's interest. Okay. Now, I, I understand, understandably, you're coming in from from your point of view, and someone like Matt Warman, for, for where who we're going to speak to uh, a, a bit further later on in the program, has his view as well. It is. Is it not the case? And I don't know. Maybe you don't care about this, but is it not the case that it's not going to be? It's not possible in any way, is it, to satisfy both both groups here. I mean, there's more than two groups, but let's just say that there are two sides here. It's not going to be possible for Rishi Sunak to satisfy both of you. So what's actually the end result here? Well, I think the only way to satisfy not only the Conservative Party, but actually the country is to make this bill work. And we are going to look pretty daft and we will have failed if if we go into the next election and this this third attempt at producing legislation has not stopped the votes. That is the biggest threat to the Conservative Party and the country as a whole. So really, we should all be united about wanting to make this bill work. Now, we've published these amendments today. Uh, they've been drawn up with the help of leading lawyers. We've got legal advice to say that there is there are respectable international legal arguments for our amendments. And so it's now up to people who disagree with us or think they disagree with us okay. to have a look at those and see whether they think uh, that they will uh, improve the bill. But let's not forget that this bill as drafted already disapplies various elements of international law, various elements of our international treaty obligations. It already says on the face of the bill that the Home Secretary can't state categorically that it uh, is compatible with the ECHR. So that's already the case. We're not saying break international law. We're saying there are international okay. respectable arguments why our amendments will improve the bill. Right. Miriam Cates, thank you very much. MP for Peniston and Stocksbridge. And as I said, we will speak to uh, Matt Warman later in the programme. It doesn't sound very much like Miriam Kate is for the turning on this question. Kate McCann is our political editor, joins us now. Morning, Kate. Good morning. Uh, not surprising what Miriam Kate was saying. We know that's what she believed. We know this trouble was brewing for the Prime Minister. He got away with it before Christmas. This was always going to come back when the bill was considered again. Um, what do you make of the, 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 the Miriam Kate's position, the right-wing position, and how much hope do you, does Rishi Sunak have of meeting their concerns? Well, look, it's just I think it's worth going through some of the things. I mean, Miriam Cates talked at length there about one particular amendment, which is on individual claims. But there are quite a lot of different amendments that are being put down to this bill and there will be more to come too. They'll come from all different sides, both sides, really, if we just take two camps. It's probably easier than what's been called the five families yeah. and then some uh, in the Tory party because there are quite a lot of different splits on this. But some of those amendments are quite similar to what's in the legislation already, but just toughening it up a little bit. So some of those are, are possible. Some of them, a bit like the, the one that you've just been talking about there, about individual claims, are a bit more difficult. And really at the heart of this, the Prime Minister is trying to balance Rwanda and what, what Rwanda is happy to, to compromise on. Because remember, this country has to sign up to whatever the UK government is proposing. And Rwanda is quite worried about its own international obligations. They don't really want to agree to a scheme which kind of rubbishes all of the UK's own international uh, you know, reputation, I suppose, is, is the big point at the heart of it. So that's one part. The other is about the judicial system, about whether or not there is going to be some blowback on this. And I think what, what the prime minister is trying to do is go as far as he can without putting his government at the point where it would have to go through the courts again. The difficulty, as you heard there from Miriam Cates, is that many of his own MPs don't trust him. And we've talked about this before, Stig. Trust is at the heart of mm. this. You know, if those MPs don't believe that the Prime Minister has gone as far as he can, if they don't believe that he will use the bill to go as far as he possibly can, then they're going to try and amend it. And one of those MPs in the group that Miriam Cates is in there is Robert Janwick, the former Immigration Minister. And he is saying, essentially, if you don't toughen it up, it won't work and we will look like a laughing stock. It just it will fail all over again. I, I think, so sorry, Kate, well, I just wonder if Rishi Sunak, if he had, I mean, we've talked about it before uh, when you were on this programme, actually, Kate, about whether or not he said during the leadership campaign he thought about scrapping the Rwanda scheme. I wonder if he, he could have a mulligan, if he could have his time again, he would just not do this at all because he can't win here. It's a massive, massive faff. The argument about the laughing stock holds really whatever happens to a certain extent. And by the way, there's an election coming in the next 12 months. So whatever massive efforts they go through, this could all be overturned within seconds of Labour becoming um, uh, government. It, this, this feels like an awful lot of effort. And the question is, is it actually worth it? Well, that is Labour's policy, of course, is to scrap the Rwanda plan. In terms of effort, Rishi Sunak will point to the fact that small boat arrivals are down. And he says that's because of the deterrent effect of the Rwanda policy, even though it doesn't exist yet, the fact that it's going to. 
it's largely, though, I think, in part to returns agreements with countries like Albania, you know, sending people yeah. back to those countries. Would he want to go back if he had his time again and not do it? I think the answer is if you look across Europe and America and actually all around the world, countries are really struggling with this issue of illegal immigration. The UK would have to tackle this, however we did it. And the Prime Minister and, you know, some some of the sort of organisations that exist outside of the government say that you need a deterrent effect. You need something like this in order to stop people from making those perilous journeys. I think it's worth saying on this particular legislation, which will come back in the Commons next Tuesday and Wednesday, the, the real question for MPs like Miriam Cates is if you don't get your amendments through, will you vote the bill down? Yeah. Because if the answer to that is no, then the Prime Minister isn't really in that much trouble. As long as he can keep those on the centre of his party on side, I think that is a question that will become, you know, much more important over the coming days. I think from Rishi Sunak at the moment, the message is the bill is very tough. I'm willing to listen. But I think we've gone as far as we can go in terms of those international obligations. So this is likely to be another difficult moment for the prime minister. But it's very hard to see at the moment what those MPs can do if they don't get their way. Yeah, sure to try to bring the bill down and whether they'll, they'll do it. We'll see next week. Kate, great to speak to you as ever. That's our political editor, Kate McCann.